Welcome to the Global Connection, a Tel Aviv University podcast. Journey with us as we discover how TAU's academic community and friends are engaging with and helping to shape this ever-changing world. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Global Connection. I'm your host, Dr. Anna Sajeki, and I am today welcoming Nadav Laor. Hi. Hi. Uh, Nadav, you're the head of incoming tourism at Tel Aviv Global. Um, which is a municipal company in charge of promoting the Tel Aviv brand globally. And from what I understand, you're also a resident here of Tel Aviv Yafo for about 15 years. Absolutely. All right. Well, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing a bit of your wisdom on the city. (laughs) And we are here in the, the studio today to talk about the city and talk about Tel Aviv Yafo, and particularly an interesting recent revelation which is that Tel Aviv Yafo may just be the happiest city in the world. Um, so the news comes from The Travel, a major travel blog that recently came out with an article regarding the 14th happiest cities in the world. And Tel Aviv was number one, uh, beating out the likes of Madrid, Stockholm, Toronto, Amsterdam, Zurich, and all your other usual suspects. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, what the world is paying attention to right now are the, the weekly protests happening in Tel Aviv. And um, so for our listeners, uh, we are going to talk about that uh, a little bit, but um, yeah. I think we're going to focus on this exciting news about Tel Aviv is a happy city and what makes a happy city. And um, with that in mind, I thought I'd just sort of jump into it. Um, so in your opinion, mm-hmm. um, what makes Tel Aviv a, a happy city? Well, um, first of all, hi, and um very happy to be here. Um, I honestly, um, it's hard. It's hard for me to to say, um, but I I think it's not um, very surprising um, because Tel Aviv is this really unique city um, that combines um, this amazing weather uh, that we have here year round um, and this uh, sense of a small big city. Um, that's very special, um, I think, for, for Tel Aviv. It's, it's just a human scale city um, um, that sort of um, sort of seems like or feels like this um, small town or kibbutz, we like to say in, in, many, um, in many places, but it is also this global, innovative, um, exciting city uh, that uh, everything just happens all the time. Um, it's this we call it the nonstop city, um, open twenty four seven. But it has this this cool combination between uh, this fast paced uh, place, this global hub, and this really familiar sort of like neighborhood like city that uh, everyone knows everyone. Um, families are close friends are close uh, I think the 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 social ties and the social network uh, is a huge part of what makes um, Tel Aviv this this really comfortable very casual uh, place for people to just live hang work um, party um, kick back yeah I feel like that's that's a, a huge part of uh, what makes it, really cool and and really fun um yeah. which i guess could help you feel happy as well yeah yeah i mean i i moved here not too long ago and um what you're saying checks out definitely like uh one thing i'm a walker so the fact that you can walk across the city um definitely. and at the same time it's like there's so much going on and you're right there's this feeling like everybody knows each other but they're super friendly too to to people who are new here and yeah so it, it's got that interesting combination of a lot of different things i feel like walkability uh is this you know this buzzword that uh, um is circulating around um i feel like tel aviv has always been just really walkable now we just call it that but um there's the uh the historic Geddes plan uh that uh the, we have to british to thank for uh, that build up uh, the the Levair, the center of the city, um, in the beginning of the 20th century, um, and um, connected to to Jaffa and uh, the south side of Tel Aviv. All of these spaces 
that are now, and we might talk about it a bit later, these really huge uh, tourist hubs uh, as well in Tel Aviv are comfortable, shady, um, um, really nice walkable streets uh, that you can um, just, you know, browse through, um, you know, like window shopping uh, or just see people um, sit in the middle of the day with their laptops on uh, street benches and just, you know, going about their, their business and their day. All right. Um, so, yeah, walkability, the, the technical term for um, something I've always loved to do. Um, but you're right. I think that's kind of one of the factors that makes a city great. And so I know you probably pay attention to this a little bit more than other people. Mm. Um, so in your opinion, what, what are some of those factors in general that contribute to the happiness of a city? So I would say um, that there's a real sense of uh, just freedom in, in Tel Aviv. Um, and again, um, you've you've said it um, at the beginning of uh, of your of your things. Um, um, we're in this crazy time where um, freedom is now this this um, this value that we really cherish uh, and and stand for. Um, so, but I, I I I truly believe that Tel Aviv is this place where people. Um, can really be who they are. I know it sounds like a cliche, but honestly, 15 years into living here, um, I can vouch for it. Uh, people come here from all over the country and from all over the world um, to just to just be and live um, and feel very comfortable in their skin. Um, and I feel like freedom uh, is a huge factor of, of happiness. Um, so yeah, when it comes to... Um, you know, being um, um, a part of the LGBTQ uh, community in Tel Aviv, that's huge. And um, um, I feel like people feel very, very comfortable uh, living in, in Tel Aviv in that sense. Um, or just, you know, be whatever, do whatever. Um, um, yeah, diversity and pluralism are these like huge values that we really not just um, promote, but but really live by every day. Um, I feel like that's uh, that's a huge part of it. Yeah, um, the Pride Parade here, it's one of the biggest, definitely in the Middle East, and I would say even in the world too. Like there are people coming from all over the world for that. Yeah, and we just uh, we just celebrated uh, Pride um, a month ago. Okay. Um, it's the 25th year um, and one of the largest ones that we've ever had. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely the, the largest event that Tel Aviv hosts every year. It's the largest tourist um, um, event that we uh, not just uh, promote, but we welcome tens of thousands of, uh, of tourists from all over the world that, that come here for, uh, for Pride. Um, and it's, it's fun. I mean, I go every year. Um, now that I'm a part of Tel Aviv Global, of uh, the Tel Aviv municipality, uh, I actually have to work <laughs> right, <laughs> through right, the whole parade. Right. It's still it's still fun. Um, it's, it's just a little different when yeah, you're it's working a, yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Not as much drinking, but um, okay. but it's um, um, it's it's this really amazing uh, parade that happens uh, every year, and just the city goes nuts. It goes crazy, um, and you know it's decorated throughout the month, um, and you see people from all over. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and it's a great time, definitely. I, I've been here once for it, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so for me, I so we're at Tel Aviv University right now. And full disclosure, I live kind of near the university. Okay. And partly why uh, we chose to live near the university is I love Hirecom Park. So much. Mm -hmm. it's, it's such a so that it's a major urban park in um, Tel Aviv, and so for me, uh, things like green spaces where you can just go and you know the hustle and bustle of the city quiets a little bit. Um, that's really important for me, um, and so I, I thought it was really cool to hear about some of the new um, initiatives going on, just in terms of. Um, green spaces in the city. Um, I heard that there's a project by 2030 uh, to plant 100,000 new trees right, as well. Right. So can you tell me like some of those initiatives happening to just 
continue to build a really great city space here. So a huge um, sort of like transformation that the city is going through is um, well, there's there's a few, um, but it's becoming um, it's becoming much more dense. Um, so population is growing uh, really rapidly. Uh, there's huge construction projects going on everywhere. Um, and I, I feel like the municipality uh, realized that uh, in order to host all these people, all these new people coming in in the next decade or so, um, we really have to start paying attention to uh, public spaces. And I feel like COVID uh, really gave it a huge push where people, um, you know, were locked in and then needed to, to go outside to get some fresh air, but also keep their distance. Um, so that happened all over the world. I feel that um, uh, municipalities and cities um, realized that there's um, the public spaces are this amazing resource uh, that they need to, to take advantage of. And I feel like Tel Aviv has started out taking care of its public spaces even before COVID, but now it gave it this huge push. Um, so we see these um, amazing new spaces that we haven't had before um, that promote uh, walkability, pedestrians um, and, um, and bikers over cars, um, which, is, which is really great, uh, and over uh, parking. Uh, which okay. is a lot, a lot of times very difficult for people to, to, um, you know, say goodbye to their parking spaces. Right, but right. when you see, um, for example, the um, Habima Square, um, this really beautiful uh, square that was built by Dani Kalavan um, in the middle of the city, that used to be a parking lot just a few years ago. And it oh, is now wow. this, okay. this ama- yeah. Yeah, no, it's one of the greatest places to gather. Um, it's gorgeous. Um, another yeah. amazing project uh, that the city um, just um, just finished like a, a year ago or so uh, is the uh, Hamesila Park. Um, so it's this um, kind of like the Tel Aviv High Line, I would say. Um, there used to, to be a track between old Jaffa and Jerusalem that like the Ottomans built, uh, in the 19th century. Um, and again, that, um, that train line closed, uh, many, many decades ago. And this, this huge stretch of tracks, uh, became this, uh, parking lot for decades. Um, and now as a part of, um, the, the first, um, um, rail line, uh, the light rail that is being built in Tel Aviv. Um, the city took advantage of uh, the construction of the train, um, buried it underground and built this amazing park and brought it back to its uh, residents. Uh, and it's been a huge success with coffee shops everywhere, bike lanes, um, kids running around. Uh, we go there with uh, with our kids every Saturday. Uh, I have to say Toronto needs to learn a little bit. One of the the biggest sort of debates there is that um, we have the Gardner Expressway, which is above ground, Mm -hmm. and it's kind of crumbling a little bit now. It was built, you know, I believe 1950s, 60s. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a a highway. It's a highway. It's above ground, and everyone, like, the ideal would be to put it underground, right, and just have that space for people because it also cuts the city off from the waterfront. Okay. Um, So... Yeah, having those those spaces of connectivity and bringing people into them is huge. So I know this is something that's happening uh, in in many places in the U.S. where they say, okay, this inter- this uh, this highway is just intersecting our city. Let's take it down. Um, let's um, let's do like a road diet where uh, you take off lanes and and plant more trees. Um, yeah, so I feel like uh, Tel Aviv is doing that in in many places. They've closed off. I think over 20 different streets around the city and made um, and took took out um, um, cars and made it pedestrian uh, walkways, which is really cool. And yeah, you mentioned um, the um, 100,000 trees by 2030. So as a part of, you know, uh, the city getting ready for warmer temperatures uh today is like scorching hot uh outside um uh, the city has decided that they're going to plant um at least 10,000 trees uh new trees every year um throughout the decade uh so hopefully we'll get to 100,000 by uh 2030 
uh, we need to do much more. Uh, but um, yeah, that's that's also great. I love trees. <laughs> I love them too. Give them a hug. <laughs> yeah. be, be a tree hugger. Um, so before I moved here, you know, one of the things I did, I, I have friends who grew up in Tel Aviv and people who have visited and that. So it was kind of, you do your research a little bit mm -hmm. and you're like, is it a good place to move? And everyone was like, yeah. And they kind of talk about like there's a vibe in Tel Aviv mm -hmm. and maybe it's super nerdy of me because I feel like vibes are probably things you don't want to try and define. Like they're just a vibe, but there's a vibe here. And if we were like, I'm curious to pick your brain a little bit, like what, what is that vibe? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to define. Um, I call it the elusive vibe of Tel Aviv. I it's, it's, um, it's this feeling, you know, when I, when I lived, um, I, I grew up um, in the States for um, part of uh, my life. And when I came back to visit, I feel like as an outsider, I was, I was um, able to see that uh, vibe like firsthand as, as, you know, like a tourist or whatever, like an outsider. Um, and it was very compelling. Um, it's this weird combination this magic combination between you know this like very modern urban center to this really like laid back um middle eastern city um you know mixed with like jewish tradition um and people from all over the world it's hot and messy uh but it's also like chill um yeah it's it's there's a lot of contradictions um it's it's hard to define i i kind of feel like we don't need to try to define it do you know right. what i mean well which is a vibe be, like when you start to define it i feel like you're being really uncool i know right? <laughs> <laughs> i apologize everyone for, for attempting um so what and in part like it is a cool city and like you go to Florentine and the graffiti and is amazing. And um, I know you were in a different life, an actor for a little while. Yeah. Um, so I understand as a resident, you're still kind of tapped into the arts and, arts and culture mm -hmm. scene here. Um, so I don't want to talk too much about the vibe and whether it may be connected, but um, I am curious because I know there's a lot going on in terms of arts and culture. Um, so can you can you talk to that a little bit? I mean, I can I can say um, more about the arts and culture scene as as like a resident and um, and yeah, as someone who's been a part of the uh, the art scene here. Um, Tel Aviv is you know by far it's Israel's like cultural capital, uh, and I I feel like we give a good fight to to some other uh, major cities as well. Uh, the municipality has done um, a lot to promote um, artists, um, in the city, um, and to make sure that, um, the, the really amazing, really cool things that happen here reach all of its residents. Um, so, um, there's a, a huge investment in, um, uh, festivals, um, that are uh, happening around the city, like outdoor festivals. So we mentioned the pride parade, which is a huge festival. Uh, but we also celebrate, uh, we just celebrated the 20th uh, White Night Festival. So White Night mentions um, the addition of Tel Aviv um, to the UNESCO World Heritage Site list. Um, in 2003, um, Tel Aviv became a World Heritage Site um, because of its um, um, Bauhaus um, architecture, buildings, architecture. Right. Yeah. So we have we have uh, the largest concentration of Bauhaus buildings uh, in the world, okay. which kind of makes uh, the city center like this open air museum, um, which is really cool because uh, you don't have to pay and no, just walk free, around. No, <laughs> a free museum. Um, yeah, exactly. Totally. Uh, so White Night is this one night every June where um, all of um, uh, the city's uh, cultural institutions stay open late throughout the night. Uh, there's like music everywhere um, and um, uh, street art. And um, yeah, it's it's this this huge festival. Um, and then there's like local neighborhood festivals um, that are very unique to the different neighborhoods that make up the fabric of the city. Uh, and they're very different. Like there's this um, 
Arab music uh, festival going on in Old Jaffa. Um, and there's um, a vegan festival uh, that happens at Sorona every year. Like there's there's really a lot of things that happen, you know, almost every day. Right. Um, right. And and I feel like the municipality is also investing heavily in its cultural institutions as well. Uh, well, there's the Tel Aviv uh, Museum of Modern Art mm -hmm. uh, that's been voted one of the top 50 museums in the world. Uh, I love it. It's it's amazing. Um, and uh, we are very close right here at Tel Aviv University to the uh, Anu Museum, uh, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. um, Museum of the Jewish People. Uh, that was just renovated. I think they invested like fifty million dollars uh, in in uh, in putting it up together. Um, it's also like top notch. Yeah. So uh, so basically, if you're bored in Tel Aviv, then we have to shake a finger at you and go, okay, there are definitely things to do here. Yeah. Um, one other thing um, I know of is that Tel Aviv has the greatest amount of startups per capita in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's very much a startup city, uh, too. So does that sort of play into the feeling of what Tel Aviv is? Definitely. And in the in the last decade, even more so, um, a huge percentage of uh, the city and its population is either working at on a high tech uh, company or uh, some some what related to the ecosystem. Um, Tel Aviv is now ranked, I think, uh, the fifth largest ecosystem in the world. Um, so that's like after, you know, like New York, Bay Area. Um, and um, I, I think we're even larger than like Tokyo. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's like 3000 different uh, high tech companies, really huge ones um, that started out here in Tel Aviv. And as opposed to you know, earlier um, uh, in like the 90s or um, um, at the beginning of the of the century um, where pe people came up with um, these really cool companies and were trying to like sell them off to these huge tech companies uh, in the U.S. or whatever. Um, now it's really shifted and these Israeli companies stay in Tel Aviv. Um, they um, they put their headquarters here. And they started buying off these American companies that come to, uh, here to Tel Aviv. Um, so we see all these international companies uh, setting up R and D centers. Um, it's it's um, it's it's like a revolution that's been happening in the city, and you can see it in the skyline and uh, with like huge uh, office buildings uh, being uh, put up and everything. Um, but again, I feel like when you see these really crazy very talented um tech people walk around the city they just look like they're heading to the beach like it's everything's so casual people walk around with their flip-flops and uh and shorts uh and go work for like amazon or google or wix or monday and yeah right uh, right um and i feel like maybe that combination of like the beach culture with entrepreneurship um you know, there's that slogan I always hear, which is Tel Aviv is a city that never sleeps. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, is is it connected to that? Like where, how did that even come about? Um, so uh, we call it nonstop city. Nonstop um, city, in, yes. In Hebrew, it's Ir Lelof Saka. They came up with it in like the 80s, I feel. Um, and do you know that when uh, when they did like a rebranding of the Tel Aviv logo, I think uh, when it turned a hundred, like fifteen years ago, um, they want they wanted to change the the slogan. Uh, they had a few options, and they're about to change it. And there was like an outcry of the public saying, "No, we want to keep it. Wow. We love the nonstop okay. city okay. Uh, slogan." Well, because I feel like it's it's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I I, I will tell you, you the tell truth. Tell me, yeah. I've I've um I've worked for municipalities in Canada, and had the conversation about changing, and like if Tel Aviv is very lucky that you have 
slogan that's true and you can say it and it rings true and people support it. Because if you're at the point where you're like, what should our slogan be? Yeah. Who are we? Yeah. 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 So, so it, when I mean, walk around the city, not I mean, weekends. Sure, that's easy. But even on like, um, uh, you know, like a Tuesday night, um, there's the pubs are like filled with people. Um, big parties happening uh, till the early um, hours of, of the night or the morning. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I feel like it's. I, I feel like it's real. Um, there's there's a, there's a whole new part of the city that comes alive uh, during the night. Um, and I feel like one of the cool things about that as well is that um, it feels very safe um, for people to just walk around, um, go to a party, go to a bar, go back home. Uh, even in the middle of the night, like that's, that's, that's a fun part of the city where you don't have to like worry about personal safety. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, now I, I wasn't lying when I mentioned earlier that before moving here, I talked to people who have visited and they were like, this place is amazing. Um, and so you work with like in tourism mm -hmm. and specifically with, um, yeah, the, the Tel Aviv global um, and, and so for you, why do like, can you talk a little bit about the tourism initiatives? Um, clearly you're doing something right because people keep coming back. I don't know. Um, so thanks. Uh, <laughs> so Tel Aviv Global is, um, it's a municipal company, uh, and we're in charge of, of, yeah, promoting, uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, and its brand globally. Um, so we do that through uh, the economic development um, department and the ecosystem that we just talked about. We also do it through um, the international communications, uh, our social media, and of course our relationships with like um, the international press. Um, it, but we also uh, promote Tel Aviv as this um, leading uh, tourist destination. Uh, and in that sense, We've actually checked, um, and two out of three visitors to Tel Aviv are returning visitors, uh, which I guess is saying something uh, because people do come back. Um, I feel like we talked about it earlier, but when we talk to people, uh, when we talk to tourists, um, and I, I do it like I stop people at a, at a red light. I'm like, are you a tourist? Like, what's going on? How are you doing? Where are you going? Uh, right, right, right. How are you liking the city? people are really surprised. Um, I feel like people don't really expect someone to be checking in on them. Well, no, I feel like people don't really know what to expect coming into Tel Aviv. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay. cause okay. what, what, what is it? Is it, is it like this European city? No, not really. Is it a part? Oh, well, it's in the middle East. Like, will it look like, well, not exact. It's this, it's this weird combination. Um, and people and people are, uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, but we, yeah, we do a lot of work, um, obviously, to um, get the word out there um, with um, international campaigns targeting people who might want to uh, uh, hop by and, and, and visit. Um, and we have um, a whole um, array of like, you know, we have the tourist information centers spread out around the city uh, to make sure tourists um, get um, answers for whatever questions they have. Um, and, um, we develop, um, tourist attractions within the city. Um, we have to make sure that, um, Tel Aviv keeps up with other places in the world in terms of content, uh, in terms of the visitor's experience. Uh, so anything that has to do with, um, transportation, um, um, and, um, I mean, uh, transportation in, in this in the sense that um, people know where to go, how to do it, uh, that, uh, you know, making sure everything's translated into English. Um, uh, yeah, to, to make sure people have like an easy, fun time uh, to 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 walk around the city. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We have um, city tours walking around everywhere um, so people will get to know the city. Yeah. OK, very cool. Um, now, admittedly, I mean, we can't really ignore the, the time and the context we're in and whether it's personally from family or friends back home, um, you know, I, I get questions like, is Tel Aviv safe right now with mm -hmm. the protesting? What's going on? Um, 
my own personal experience is I actually think it it's incredibly moving that week after week, um, the majority of the city, um, so many people are coming out um, and it's people of all ages from three years old to 87 years old and they're coming and they're gathering um, and it's because they have a commitment um, to to a belief and like you mentioned a belief in relation to freedom and for me that actually kind of speaks to what is so special about this city too you know there there are people that are just yeah they have these commitments they have these beliefs and um and they're willing to see things through yeah so so i i'm i'm just uh to to say um i feel like um I feel like values like freedom, uh, diversity, pluralism, these are things that Tel Aviv has always um, um, stood for. Um, and I feel like uh, it is now uh, fighting for them. Um, and um, we we actually always say that we want to be this lighthouse city uh, for the world. Um, and yeah, I feel like I feel like we're, we're here to make sure that uh, it stays that way. Um, yeah, it's really important. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm I'm happy to hear that. And uh, Nadav, I want to thank you for joining me today. And yeah, this was fun. Yeah, I have <laughs> I have new ideas for checking out Tel Aviv too, okay. which I'm excited about. Thank you. <laughs>